Hi right, guys, welcome back to the Clack Shack. Uh, been really busy around here. I got several of my stove covers that I've got to get done out. I've got enough wood to do two more and then tomorrow it's off to the sawmill and into the kiln so there's going to be some downtime. So hopefully I'm going to get to do some more, uh, some more laser work. This machine, my X-Tool, has been running non-stop now for about four days. The only time that it's not running is when I'm asleep. Uh, pretty much any time I'm awake, it's running. Uh, give me just a second, let me get something. And as many of you may have saw on my channel, uh, my friend May May at May May Made It. She does crafts and uh, does a lot with crickets and stuff like that, cricket machines. And this is a creation that May May had dreamt up. And these are what she is calling ink bandits. And I've got a hundred of these to do. And currently, and for any of you May May followers that's uh, participated in this clack attack she's got going on, uh, I am currently, when these three here get through burning, I'll be just over 50. So I'm almost halfway there. Now I did have a day or two that I was engraving stove covers and uh, I didn't get to cut any of them out, but these are, these are all cut out of 4.5 millimeter Luon. And uh, for y'all that, that, that seen my videos about what I use, you know, this is the stuff that everybody sells, tells you is junk and you can't use it and all that. Out of these 50 some odd burns that I have done of these things, I have had two that one of the pieces, there was a void in the wood and it caused one of my, my little fingers to break off. And so I had to throw that, that one piece, I threw it away, but the remaining pieces I kept. And the reason being is if the next time I have an issue, if it's on one of the other pieces, I have spares. So not a big deal. But anyway, I've got something I want to update you guys on the Atom Stack and where I'm at with it. So stick around for just a minute. Let me go put the, the bandits back over there. I just wanted to kind of tease May May's folks with this here and uh, be right back. All right, guys, I know I've been busy and uh, I hadn't had a whole lot of time to do a lot of uh, uh, videos, but in between stove covers and burning these bandits, and, and one thing that the bandits, I guess, kind of helped me out with is that my big machine's staying tied up. And so if I have a little small something I want to do, if I, need a, if I need a business card burned or uh, just a small burn, I found myself going to try to use this guy because until my D1 Pro gets here, this and my D1, that's all I got. And this guy's been running nonstop now. So I started trying to maximize, and y'all know how I am, this machine. So I'm gonna zoom the camera in for just a second, let you see what I'm working with here. And then I'm gonna move it back out of the way because I wanna show you some things. And I'm gonna be moving around, I don't wanna knock my camera over. But that right there, guys, is the uh, Atom Stack P9 M40. It's a five and a half watt, but it now has its very own Clack Shack interchangeable jig. All right, now that I got the camera where you can see uh, everything here, uh, I want to start off by saying that this machine was sent to me free of charge, okay? So it was free. Now, does that mean I'm going to uh, be less critical of it? Absolutely not. Uh, I found several things that, that weren't in the instructions, and it wasn't part of the setup process. <clears throat> and I'm going to be honest with you, when I, when I first got it put together, I, I'm used to a 10 watt, so automatically the 5.5 watt kind of had, it, it, it had me over a barrel because I was like, man, it, it just feels like it has no power. Uh, it, it just... I, I was a little disappointed in the power output, but after a, a few days of playing with it and a little bit of, of, of work and some adjustments, I've actually got it to where it's a, it's, a, it's a feasible machine. Now, for what I do with cutting out these things and so forth, it's, it's not what I want for that. Now, 
the 10 watt version that that might be scary i mean that might be a good thing but like i said this was given to me it came in this configuration that's what i got to test and i tested it so but what i have found is that after about six to seven passes it's cutting through my 4.5 millimeter luon and to be honest with a full, with a five and a half watt machine with no air assist i don't think that's terrible i mean if i had three millimeter plywood i probably would have used it for this machine but i don't so i used my four and a half and i was able to make myself a jig and this is just for three dog tags or two business cards whichever i decide to burn and i know you know yes you can do 20 of these 30 of these i am more than aware of that and if you've seen my jig kits you know uh and i've also just recently built for my uh x tool d1 kit i just today put the finishing touches on a uh, 30 dog tag jig kit that i'm going to drop it uh in my etsy shop and i strategically made it to where it will fit one of my large jig panels and you don't have to do any adjustments to it or anything if you already have the burns for the large jig panel all you really got to do is import that into your job drop it center everything and and you can cut it in one and in, in, you know in one go so but what i would recommend if you're going to get this machine is don't be trying to do heavy lifting as far as the the real thick material with cutting but for engraving i will say it has very very good clear engraving i have found it does a really good job of uh, with coated metals, it has enough power to remove the, uh, the coating and reveal the metal underneath. I don't have a rotary for it, so I can't do tumblers, but I've done some dog tags. I've done the anodized business cards, and it's doing a really good job. It has really, really fine detail. I mean, it rivals my D1. It may even be, may even be a little more precise as far as, like, uh, I guess because of the, the, the laser, the dot, it may actually be just a touch more high resolution than the D1, to be honest with you. But for these type jigs, if you buy any of my jig kits and, and you're using the inserts so that you can, you know, create that little space to, to flip these things out on, what I do is I use painter's tape on the backside to hold my little, my little inserts. That way, if, if I break this jig and I need to rebuild it, I can just pull those loose, put some new painter's tape on there, and go with it. But anyway, that's the uh, final product. And this thing doesn't have a really, really big workspace, so I made the jig panels kind of small. I have uh, this one here. When you open it in the software, it almost takes up the entire workspace. So that's why it's substantially smaller than my D1. Uh, the evolution of my locking jigs... This was version one. Uh, version one, these were too big. It was too fat across here. And I had to do a little bit of adjusting on how it locked to the machine. So version one here, I, I kept it so I could show y'all uh, what I did there with version one. But version one is now in the recycle bin. All right. This was version two. Version two was much better. Uh, I opted to go with smaller round uh, locking mechanisms and to be honest with you they seem to be a little easier to, to, to get on and off and they don't hang as bad so that's that's what I wound up going with and the way these work is just like my regular interchangeable jig if I can do this with one hand with two hands the uh, the three pieces kind of marry together like this all right uh, and that's what holds it now the one thing that I will say with any of my jigs, if you have one and you're using it or whatever, I haven't done this one yet, but flip around to the back side of it, which with this one, that would be the back side of it. And you can use you some painter's tape or duct tape or whatever kind of tape to hold these pieces together. And that way, if you pick it up, it doesn't fall apart. Unless you're traveling with it and you want to be able to break it down, put it in a drawer or whatever, that's cool too. Uh, the, but this one's going in the recycling bin too because it didn't quite meet my specifications. But as you can see, this one has finally met my expectations. It does what I wanted it to do. Uh, 
I worked it around the home location of the, the, the laser. So the work area of this thing and the, where the laser stops at kinda, kinda gave me a little bit of a engineering uh, concern. I wanted it to where when it goes back to the home position, you can still change out whatever you've got here and then you can run it again. And so that's why I kind of shrank the size of the, the, the jigs is to make room for the laser to be out of the, out of the area in which you're putting stuff in, taking it out. Now, you know, you could, you could modify these if you want, make them bigger, whatever. But for this little guy, uh, I, I don't really see a need in it. But anyway, that's my jig kit. And I'm going to move on from that. And I'm going to kind of go over some of the, the hangups that I have with this machine and how I've got those corrected. So give me just a minute. I'm going to move the camera around to the other side and I'll be right back. All right, guys. Uh, one of the hangups that I have with it, of course, is I didn't have anywhere to put it. Uh, I don't have a honeycomb for it, but like I said, I'm not going to be leaning on this guy to do a whole lot of cutting. So unless somebody gifts me a honeycomb, I'm not going to be making the investment for honeycomb for this machine. I've got my D1 and I'll have my D1 Pro. Those are going to be my go-tos my go -tos for cutting. This, this guy is going to be a, an engraver and maybe some light cutting if I'm in a pinch, but that's it. But anyway, the very first upgrade that I would like to point out to you is this is the focusing tool. It is a clear piece of acrylic that comes with the machine. In the instructions and on the videos that I watched, this thing was black. Okay, but I guess they opted to go with clear so that you couldn't accidentally damage it with the machine if you left it in place. That's what I think happened. But anyway, I found myself laying this guy down and being that it is clear acrylic, my old eyes were having a little bit of a hard time finding it. And there's just nowhere really to put it. So I used one of my magnets that I use for my, my ID uh, my name tags that I make. It's uh, it's just a really strong magnet. And I used a little bit of my 3M strip adhesive that I love so much. And I have created a way to mount this so that you will never lose it again and have to hunt for it like I did. And what that is, is you just take it and put it near the leg and it magnetically attaches to the leg. So it's always right there. And all you do is just flip it off of there, put it back. It's out of the work area, it's out of the way. When you're reaching in here, typically you're gonna be away from it. Uh, I did not put it too close to the controller because these are very strong magnets, so I didn't wanna accidentally erase any uh, memory or anything in there. So I just kinda of stick it right here on the leg. That was my, my very first upgrade that I came up with. The second thing that I found was with this machine when I first got it, and I'm gonna power it off so it's, I don't accidentally damage anything. When I first got this machine, the one thing that I noticed about it was that I could take, and let's move over here by our, our work area. I could take and focus it back here. And when I got it focused, as it came out this way, it would be way like off focus. Like it would, it, it would, it was coming downhill this way probably, uh, a couple of millimeters and I don't know that that's any fault of, of the company who built it but it was my fault when I was putting it together because of the way that I put it together and the instructions didn't really tell me to do this but what I had to do is I took and basically they it comes with two little black pieces of acrylic and I used two of those little black pieces of acrylic and I spaced it out here up and and just spaced it, took this, uh, the screws, these four screws here loose, spaced it up and kind of lifted the machine, put the machine under a little bit of pressure. And then once I tightened those screws down and took those spacers out and it just kind of fell back and it's, it rides like it needs to now. And it stays fairly consistent all the way from all the way out to all the way back there's very little deviation. So if you put this thing together and you notice that it's running downhill, or maybe it could be running uphill, but I, the way the weight distributes, I think it's more likely gonna go downhill every time. 
but mine was running downhill as it came out. And so now I've got it to where it, I mean, there may be a slight, slight variation, but it is not enough to affect the cutting ability of the machine. So, but that would be my second upgrade. One, get yourself a magnet. Two, space this up and kind of put this, uh, put this over, over exaggerate the level of this thing so that when it does get the weight on it, it pulls it back down to level. But that's my two tips for this machine. All right, guys, I'm not going to bog you down with a whole lot more information about this little guy, but uh, like I said, it is a, uh, for the power output and for the size of the workspace, it, it is definitely useful. It's a lot more useful now that I've kind of figured out some of the, my pitfalls that I have with the machine. Uh, the, the, the cantilever design that they used or the, the, where, the, where the boom comes out and, and the uh, laser rides, like I said, that does add an extra dynamic that you kind of have to watch for in that thing, you know, it tilting as the weight gets extended onto the, the end of the boom. But if you'll do what I did and kind of overcorrect it, uh, set, the fo set the focus, you know, on the back end. What I did is I set the focus on the back end and then I, I, I ran the, the laser all the way out to the end. I put those two pieces of, of acrylic underneath it, let the machine rest on that piece of, acry of acrylic, loosen those four screws, let it kind of, you know, orient itself where it wanted to be with that, you know, spacer underneath it. And then I just cranked those things back down and tightened them up real snug. And it's been running fine now for a couple of days that way. And it doesn't have near the deviation as that, as that laser head goes out and out and in, out and in. But like I said, after a few, after a few weeks or few days of, of using it pretty regular. Uh, it's not a, not a bad little machine. If you've got one of those, then by all means, check out my Etsy store. Uh, you can watch some of the other videos where I demonstrate the jigs, kits, and how to make jigs a little more in depth. I don't want to keep just beating a dead horse and going over how to use these jig kits. Uh, there's plenty of folks out there that can vouch for the usefulness and the, uh, the way I make the files as far as how the files come out. With this machine, the file will only be available in Lightburn because I can't, haven't really seen any, I guess you could use laser garble for it, but I'm assuming maybe it would open up the files from Lightburn, but I'm just a Lightburn junkie, so the file's gonna be in Lightburn. If there's a lot of demand for some other format, then I might can go in and, and tweak it and change it, but uh, I just didn't see the, the need in doing it when most people who have this, this machine are gonna be using Lightburn, so. But anyway, I appreciate you for stopping by and I'm gonna keep hammering out these guys here and uh, keep my fingers crossed and hoping that maybe before long, Xtool can get my, my pro out to me where I can kind of double my, my capabilities here. And I got an email today. I may be getting a couple more uh, pieces of equipment to try out. And if I do, we're gonna have some fun with those. Uh, one of them is gonna be another enclosure I don't know all the facts or all the details about it. I'm still waiting to hear back, but they reached out. And the other one is an air assist uh, kit. And it looks really, really similar to the one that's on the X-Tool D1. So I'm thinking that might actually be a possibility when I get my Pro, you know, I can outfit it. I can outfit it with the one I have, and then I'll have an extra air assist kit for the, uh, the D1 that gets orphaned out of the uh, enclosure. So. As soon as those come in or as soon as I get more information, I'll let you know. But I appreciate you for stopping by and uh, have a good day.